Good morning, church. Thank you, Pastor Elvin, uh, for taking the risk to put me on the pulpit. This is my first time. Uh, we don't really associate much except uh, some messages over Facebook, but over the years, we were involved in um, different church gatherings, so we kind of know each other, and he's a good friend to my spiritual mentor, Pastor Ron He and Sister Grace, uh, that you all probably more familiar with, yeah? So uh, just before we go into the introduction, I just want to encourage the worship. This morning worship was so good. Yeah, this is for those who are online. Um, listening through your speaker is totally different from being in person, uh, enjoying the presence of God. Amen. And um, during the worship, I just remembered being reminded of one prophetic word that I received in um, Miri many years ago that through the worship and the praises of His people, we prepare for the returning of the King. Yeah? So I really believe that God is preparing the hearts and the worship of His people so that when He come back, He is not going to come back as a manger, He is going to come back as a King and will let us to continue to prepare this, the second coming, the return of the King. Okay, I'm so sorry to confuse you with my name, uh, which I did all the time. Uh, when I first went back to Miri, a lot of Churches, they say, oh, there's this Pastor Theo came back to Miri. And some say, Pastor Hot. They say, how many pastors actually came back to Miri? You know, uh, just happened that um, my full name actually is Theo Chung Hot. So my surname is by right is uh, Pastor Theo. It just said I grew up in a church as a young boy, 19 years old, came to know the Lord. And everyone called Hot, 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 you know. So when you become a pastor, also you become Pastor Hot. Yeah, so I'm totally okay with that uh, because I believe that uh, anyway, and the Lord has an identity for me. Yeah? So uh, just to give you a very fast introduction since it's the first time. So I came to Kuala Lumpur to study in the year 1996. Came to know the Lord in the church called New Life. And uh, at the same year, the Lord called me to serve in the youth ministry as a cell leader. That's how I started to serve Him. And um, 2000, year 2000, went to New Zealand to study and came back. And just full of passion, just want to give the best to the Lord. So... Uh, started to serve the Lord uh, in the church in a different capacity. Um, but at the same time, I was media trained, so I went out to work in the company for about five, six years. And in that five, six years, the receptionist said, um, Mr. Tio, or they'll call me Hawk also, you have more phone call from your church than our client. You know, um, the, you, you know what I mean? So the ministry at the same time have uh, has such demanding. We have about 80 to 90 young people at the same time. And I was very passionate in bringing team to mission trip. So um, one, of, one year, I probably will take out a lot of my unpaid leave just to go to mission. At yeah? uh, that time, my mom was con not concerned. They will probably speculate that I have a girlfriend in Cambodia because I went to Cambodia about 12 times you know, uh, in that, that 20 years like that. So uh, no, I didn't marry a co uh, Cambodian uh, at the end. But uh, this is the, 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 the story and... Strangely, interestingly, so we were very comfortable in the church. The church was very caring, and we were very well and taken care of. Then um, 2000, um, 2009, I got to know this uh, Korean missionary that came to Korea. Uh, at that time, I was not interested in Korean culture. Besides the kimchi lamian, I don't even watch any Korean drama. But my church member, every time went to the Orang Asli, came back, hey, they say, Hey, this Korean missionary, you know, pastor, you should check it out because they have been very concerned about these young pastors who are not married yet. You know? So they have been praying for me very hard to make sure that this pastor find a godly wife, you know what I mean? Yeah? So uh, the Lord tied the knot uh, very soon, within a one year, that's where, where my wife Jeannie is. Okay? So she will tell her story. Uh, today, if you are here to listen, I just always introduce myself. If you, have you been to Korean restaurant? Yeah, um, in KL, you are probably more exposed. When you order Korean meal, the side dishes will come out first. Okay? We call it the panchan. Then only you enjoy the main dish. So whenever I share the puppet with my wife, I introduce myself as the panchan, not the side dish, to prepare your appetite, to prepare your test bud, so that for her story to come later. Yeah? But interestingly, like I said, uh, all good, but three years ago, uh, probably about four years ago, the Lord gave us a task to cross over back to my hometown, which is Miri. Yeah? Honestly speaking, uh, I have left Miri when I was 19, so I didn't know about, uh, the, I don't, 
I don't know any churches, any uh, people over there. So I'm more familiar with Kuala Lumpur than, than Miri. But there is just this strong heart and you, you know God has never had problems speaking to us. Do you agree? But to obey the voice of God, it takes a lot of courage. Don't you think so? If only we say, God, whatever you speak, we will obey. I think He will speak forth. But I don't know whether we can take it or not. Okay, that is what happened in 2018. No, I say, God, um, I, I'm, I'm entering into my 40 years old now. The Lord had blessed me with four children. So I say, what is the next phase of my life? And the Lord said, I'm going to do a major shifting. And I want you to end this chapter so that I can do a new chapter in your life. How many of you know that a lot of time I believe God is sovereign, God is all-powerful, but our decision and our choices actually will determine the next thing that God can do in our life. There is such thing called partnership. The Lord will not force us because He has given us the free will. Yeah? You cannot say, God, no, um, I don't know what to do, but you just lead me into that. But the Lord wants us to make choices. So my choices has to end that chapter of my ministry here in Kuala Lumpur and didn't know what to prepare. And I just packed my children with my wife. The good thing is married a missionary she's always ready to go. Yeah? So probably if I married someone else, they were thinking, hey, Miri got how many shopping malls? Got Starbucks or not? Got McDonald's or not? I, I don't know about all those. But when I told my wife, my wife said, what's the matter? Let's go. You know, within that one year, we prepared. So that's where we landed in um, Miri. And I just want to quickly uh, share with you what, what the Lord has done over the last three years. It has not been easy. But it's really through all these challenges and all these crises, that is my key word, that the Lord allowed us to recognize His hand. You know? How many of you know that? You know, sometimes we, we believe that when we go through some problems, some difficulty, we always say, God, where are you? you know? uh, I thought you know, coming from a Pentecostal background, we're supposed to be blessed, we're supposed to be highly favored, we will not face any problem, we shall not face any challenges. But it's not true. And during that one whole year, the Lord had led me to look at the scripture uh, differently. But this morning, I just want to encourage you from the scripture here. Oh, yep, the slide is up. Over there, you can see, right? Is it okay to read Bible in the church? <laughs> well, I, I ask that because I don't know how many churches still do the Bible reading. Can I invite you to stand uh, in the reverend of God's word? It's just only 10 verses. Yeah, I want you to read together as a public reading of His Word, uh, these 10 verses, and we'll go in straight uh, to what I'm going to share this morning. Is that okay? Ready? Look at the screen. 3, 2, 1. So the king and Haman went into the feast with the queen Esther. And on the second day, as they were drinking wine after the feast, the king again said to Esther, What is your wish, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I found favor in your sight, O king, if it please the king, let my life be granted me for my wish and my people for my request. For I have been sold, and I, my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we have been slain, slain men and women, I would have been silent, for our affliction is not to be compared with the loss to the king. Then the king said to the queen Esther, Who is he and where is he? Who has dared to do this? When he said, A foe and an enemy, the wicked man Haman. But then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. And the king rose in his wrath from his wine drinking and went into the palace garden. But Herman stayed to beg for his wife from Queen Esther, for he saw the harm has determined against him by the king. And the king returned from the palace garden to the place where they were drinking wine, as Herman was falling to the couch where Esther was. And the king said, Will he even assault the queen in my presence and in my own house? As the word left the mouth of the king, the covered Haman's face. Then Habona, one of the Enoch in the attendance of the king, said, Moreover, the gala that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, the king, is standing at Haman's house, fifty cubits high, 
And the king said, hang him on that. So the hang hand on the ground that is prepared for Mordecai. Then the wrath of the king. Amen. Okay, please be seated. Um, we, I, I love the book Esther. So I want to give you a challenge. It's a very short book. If between these two weeks, the next two weeks, or even tonight, you know, if any one of you can go back to, to cover the whole book of Esther, you tell your pastor, so next time if I come, you know, I will give you a Golomi. Okay, you know Golomi? <laughs> you know, famous for Sarawana. We, I can only give you the instant Golomi, lah, huh? not, not the one that packed. But I think we need uh, to really discern the season and the time. And I draw so much hope. Uh, from the book of Esther, especially when come to pray for nation, come to look at us. And, you know, I have a secret agenda when I was a, a single bachelor. I said, God, I want a wife that called Esther because I believe that Esther must be so pretty that she turned the head of the queen. Yeah, if you know. But uh, by the grace of God, uh, I didn't have any girlfriend before this by the name of Esther. But God, Lord, is merciful to bring me a Korean wife. You know, and um, and when we have our first daughter, I say I want to name her Esther. You know, so my first daughter is named Esther. Um, I'm not sure whether she will be a head turner, but she is brave and she is bold, just like the Queen Esther in the Scripture. So whatever name we give to our children, you know, we have to be very careful. They will live out to the name that uh, we have given unto them. So interestingly, if you look at the book of Esther the name of God is not mentioned. There are no mention that it seems like God is not involved in the whole thing. But the plot is so exciting that it changes and at the end we see the hands and the sovereignty of God. So I want to encourage you, but sometimes because when we go through life, we may go through a season that, God, excuse me, are you still there or not? You know, during this pandemic, we, we go through difficulty in job, in relationship, you know, in health. We cry out to God, Lord, Lord, Lord are you still there? You know, are you still in Malaysia? Are you still in, in, uh, in the church and stuff like that? Then doesn't mean that when God is not actively at work, He is silent. But I really believe that there is season and time that God preparing, God orchestrate and put things into place. No, even just like how we move back to Miri, uh, later we will share how the Lord actually prepared all these things without our knowing. So now, only after the two, three years when we look back, wow, God, those were, those was your hand that has preserved us. Those was your hand that have sustained us. Have you experienced those times? That as we, as we look back what the Lord has done, then we realize that, wow, God, you has been faithful even while I remain unfaithful before you, while I was still uncertain, but God, you were at work. Yeah? So I just want to quickly go through three points. Uh, like I said, this is just a panchan. This is just a side dish. I know that all of you, are, a lot of you are into Korean drama, so there are the drama story that will come later with my, my wife. But I thought this is a church we do have, need some basic teaching foundation that to prepare for whatever we're going to share. I just want to share with you highly three points that I draw from these 10 verses that you just read. I'm sure that there are more than 10 things that we can learn. Uh, but for me, I'm a very simple person. Anything more than three points, I cannot remember. Okay? So for the benefit of this preacher, I give you three points only. Alright? So the first thing is, Esther was highly favoured. Okay? Can you imagine that we has been called God's people, we has been marked out and called the chosen generation to be highly favoured. So a lot of time we go through our Christian life, just go through the routine without really knowing our own identity. I think a true discipleship processes is so that to bring us to a point that we were lost, that we were in the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of light, to understand our identity in the Lord. Do you know that once you know your identity, you are a free person? The person can only be truly free when we know who we are, right? That's why I always tell the young people, girls, do you like guys who are confident? They are younger, right? Yeah, you want to go out with some men that know their stuff. You know, not like you ask, hey, tonight we go out for the date, where should we go? Don't know lah. Maybe I ask my daddy, mommy first. No! That's why it's very important. I always tell the girls in the youth group, don't date a boy. Date a man. Amen? 
Yeah, so that's why church, we have to prepare more boys into men from our boy to man, right? So father, mother, your children cannot remain as a boy all the time. There is a boy there. But you will be a man very soon. Yeah, amen? You are probably seven or eight, right? Yeah, but very soon you will be a man. But we, we need men to rise up to take the... the because I, 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 I can see that once we as a church, as a body of Christ, understand our position... That's where we can move freely. Yeah? So I want to see to your neighbor, you are highly favored. You are highly favored because you are God's people. And this is the request. Now the king asked to Esther, Esther, whatever you ask, I will, be, I will give it to you, even to the half of the kingdom. Almost like God come and ask, Apa lagi kamu mau? <laughs> Some of you know the joke, yeah? But I think we have to come to the confidence that when we pray, we can pray specifically because of the position. But to, for Esther to get that favour is no joke, okay? A lot of times we look at the favour, but we don't look at what Esther has done. Esther has risked her life and willing to be used by God. And that is called commitment and that is called covenant. So when we are really committed to the Lord and we understand the covenant that God has given us, then we become confident. Then when God asks, we know what to answer. Okay? First, highly favoured. The second one is people first. I love Esther because Esther's decision was a people decision. It's for the rakyat. Okay? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm not here to <laughs> do any charama, but no, it's just a season. But, and, and, as I see, a lot of times, even church leadership, because I've been in church leadership, we make a lot of decisions based on the structure, based on the organization, based on the church, but we have, not every church, lah, huh? but so, sometimes we have put the priority of the people, probably the third, the fourth. But if we have a leader that really understand whatever then needs to be done is done for the people, I think we have a good leader. Yeah? So give you some tip how to vote, right? So look around. Don't just yeah. I have to be very careful. Okay, it's on YouTube. Anyway, we pray for leaders who are really serving God's people. Okay, God's people mean all races, all tribe, all tongue, all nationality. That is really for the benefit of the people. So even when we pray, let's pray for the benefit of the people because people need to be first. And the third one here is, is the highlight of the whole thing. Uh, those who understand Cantonese, I say, Tai Se. No? Herman actually have a plot wanting to kill Mordecai. Okay, he make a pole. They say, wow, this pole no, is going to hang up my enemy. And then you know what? The best thing is he himself got hung on the pole that he made. That's why the Cantonese, I can't even find an English word that can, can portray that Tai Se. Anyone, any English teacher here can teach me? You deserve it. Yeah, you deserve it. He deserve it, but still not powerful. Tai Se is like, you know? For your evil deed, you know, has been returned back to you. And you know what? If we are God's people, we are not to take revenge, but we have to really trust God is the one that will put things into place. That's why the book of Esther brings us so much encouragement. They were the minority. They almost got wiped out already. Right? But yet, the whole table turned around. Yeah? From the crisis that they faced into the favour of His people. And you know what? Like it or not, we Christians is still the minority in the nation. Whatever you say. You know, because we all don't want to give birth to many. Lah. Pastor Hawk tried to do my part. I have four. But for pun tak cukup, you know. No, I can't increase a lot of percentage in this nation. But what I'm trying to say is whether it's minority, but as long as we, are un we understand that God has called us to be God's people, we come and pray for the nation with confidence. We come to pray for the nation with understand that we are favoured. Yeah? And understand that when we pray, we pray for the God's people and also we believe that one day things can turn around. Amen? Amen? So I hope to give you that hope. This is a special insertion for my actual sharing, actually. Okay? So when Pastor uh, Elvin saw my sharing on the Facebook, actually what happened is uh, for the last one year, I only had one message. is to recognize 
God through crises because of the crisis that God allowed us to go through. So when I look at the scripture, I started, suddenly look at the scripture rather differently. So this is a timeline. Again, I had to go very fast and very broad because as a guest speaker, I don't know when my length, next time coming back or ever come back or not. Yeah? But I just have to give you everything. Okay? So, so the, the, the timeline in the Bible, and you look at it, it's all about crisis. Okay? Let me just quickly, like I say, I wouldn't be able to go through, but I just wasn't to pinpoint. Even from the creation itself, there is a crisis. First crisis, crisis of disobedience. And you move on, crisis of barrenness. And it, during the kingdom time, there was corruption. So don't be shocked. As long as God's human, there will be corruption. True or not? Right? So don't be surprised. Say, oh, yo, why are our nation like that? But continue to pray. Yeah? And there were crises of rejection. And during the silence, the 400 years of silence, there was a crisis of separation. And during the gospel time, okay, there are young parents here. During the COVID time, some of my uh, church members couldn't even find a place to give birth, okay? Not only couldn't find, because no hospital wanted, that was during the height of the COVID cases. And I remember my, my, my good friend, best friend, sent the wife to give birth to their twin. You know how exciting it is to have twin, but he can't even go into the hospital together with the wife because of this uh, whole quarantine, isolation. It was a true crisis. And you think of it, our saviour was born in crisis situation. Can you imagine pregnant? You're about to give birth. You just want a place to give birth and to labour. Also, you can't even find a place. You have to give birth in the manger. Wouldn't you consider that as a crisis? You would, right? Yeah. So what I'm trying to tell you is that when we look at the Bible differently, it prepares us differently. No, even the church right now, we are still going through different level of crisis. Even in the future, you know, um, in the revelation which we are living it right now, it's a crisis of antichrist. So why I put this? Because I started to realize I have four children. During our time of crisis, I thought I need to prepare them to face challenges in life. No longer just send them to Bible, uh, Bible class or send them to the Sunday school to sing Jesus Love Me This I Know. It is very powerful, but to prepare the next generation, we have to do a, a lot more. Yeah? We could never imagine my three-year-old boy had to go grow up in a season that they had to wear masks. That so much until now, you ask him to take down masks, he feels very naked. Can you imagine? Because that is how they grow up. One year old as a baby, I already put on mask. Then for the three years, I, I go to kindergarten, I had to wear a mask. Then what more? Okay, what more? The ch ch challenges that they're going to face when they grow up, I think it's going to get even more intensified. So God's people, we need to pray. We need to prepare for them. Okay, but it's not all gloomy and sad talking about crisis because the scripture says already, no, Bible already promised you. I have told you this thing so that in me you may have peace. In this world you have trouble. So trouble is part of God's promises. Anyone say amen to that? But any one of you wake up to pray for trouble? No, we don't. Okay? And don't be a troublemaker also. But the Lord said, But take heart, I have overcome it. Who have overcome it? Christ has overcome it. And yet in all this, we are more than conqueror to Him to love us. This is the deal. The deal is God is not just preparing you to enter sun, uh, attend Sunday service. Christianity is not about preparing you to attend Sunday service. Christianity is about you being God's people, prepare you to be the overcomer so that the kingdom of God can be manifested on earth. Amen? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay? There is a ministry called Father School that we are actually trying to get the Father to really see into this. You can be the manifestation of God's kingdom on earth or in your family a little bit. A glimpse of God's kingdom. Huh? Okay, not get into that. But what I'm trying to say is um, from the book of Esther, we saw how God turned crisis into favour. And this is the Korean drama part now that the Lord allowed us to go through. Just one year ago, 
Um, actually, exactly one year ago, October, uh, my wife was diagnosed with stage 2 cancer. Yeah. Uh, at that time, we were very lost. We didn't know what to do. Uh, it was during the COVID time, and we couldn't even come out to Kuala Lumpur for treatment because in the small town like Miri, they had no cancer hospital. So we were pretty lost. So we pray, but Lord started to give us uh, wisdom, and um, there are things that the Lord just opened door for us. Yeah. Um, we were, she was diagnosed on Friday. Then Sunday itself, our Prime Minister announced that the border to Sarawak has been opened. Then we managed to come out uh, on Monday itself. For many people, it was just an announcement. For us, it was a Red Sea parted just before us that gave us assurance. And the one thing that we did is we immediately shared with our children and prepared them because we didn't know how long this battle is going to be. We didn't know how serious this is going to be. We even prepared them, what if mommy one day not around? Yeah, so they took out the responsibility. My elder son, 10 years old then, said, no, I will take care of the rubbish. My 8 years old girl said, daddy, I can help with the laundry and stuff like that. It was very beautiful. When I look at it, I learned so much from my children that actually as a church, sometimes when we go through challenges and crises in the leadership, we never share with the children, you know. We never share with the youth because it's not very nice to share with them because we want to spare them from all these things. But you know why? Then we will be surprised when they grow up, they don't know how to handle crisis. So whose fault? It's not their fault. It's we have not exposed them and trained them to face difficulty and challenges. So when we told them at it is, we say we are going to, um, mommy going to go through treatment, but we are going to do it as a family together. And let's pray for God's deliverance and stuff. And you know what? To add things worse, by the time I settled my wife here in Kuala Lumpur for a treatment, I went back to Miri and my brother said, hey, daddy has been quite uh, weak. Can you bring him to the hospital? In three days, my 88 years old father passed away. Okay? So a lot of friends were concerned about me. But you see the beautiful thing. Huh? I left Miri for 25 years. I never really spent much time with my dad. Yeah? But three years ago, because the Lord called us back to Miri, we stayed together. And it was COVID time for, for the two years, we were stuck with my dad. Took care of him, feed him, wash him, even shower him. So during that time when I look back, wow, the Lord has been so merciful and so gracious. When I didn't know what to do in Miri, the Lord has just allowed us as a family with the four grandchildren to spend time. Even my non-Christian brother said, wow, your timing coming back to Miri, yeah, very accurate. I say, time like this is only God's know because God is all-knowing. Amen? So obeying the voice of God, it needs to pay the price, but it is rewarding. So just to go through quickly, so um, in November, December, um, Jeannie was uh, going through different treatment and I have to take care of four children. It was very tough and very challenging. But at the same time, the Lord also gives us uh, joy, uh, gives us some affirmation to really go through that uh, challenging time together. And early this year, uh, we stepped into um, Jeannie's having her 40th birthday. Yeah, so I wrote to the airline and said, hey, uh, my wife is going through cancer page uh, treatment and then flying on the birthday. Can you surprise her? No, um, I was not on business class, but even... They were very friendly. They throw a birthday party on the plane for her. Yeah, so we see such favor and then it was so memorable. Okay, guys learn. Huh? Want to surprise your wife sometimes free one. You know, just have to take extra effort. Okay, so there are a lot of things that we can do to, to really show the love and appreciation. So she went through the um, operation and stuff like that. So this is the part that uh, when we went, when she surprised the kids by going back, so the kids um, really, you know, I remember my 11 years old boy was crying and I asked him, hey boy, why are you crying? He said, you try lah, few months without mommy, you cry or not? So he talked back to me like that. And this is the journey that the Lord has allowed. It was painful, it was hard, but at the end of the day, the Lord turned um, things around, yeah. I'm um, going to pass this time to the, the main dish, okay? Panchan over. I have to warn you, every time she likes to make people cry, so if you have tissue, you get ready. Um, I will pass my, the time to my wife. Yeah, yeah, just come up. Yep. <laughs> I know it's time is short. 
uh, again, her name confused people. Her name is, the Korean name is Jong Hei Jin. But when she came as a missionary to the Orang Asli, the Orang Asli couldn't pronounce Korean name. So give her Jinny. But the Jinny is not the G-I-N-N-Y, but it's the Jin, J-I-N-N-Y. You know? So um, whether people call Hei Jin or Jinny, it's the same lady that you are talking about. But never mind, but the Lord has done a wonderful thing. Come. Good afternoon, church. <laughs> already turned 12 o'clock already. Uh, I'm Jinny. You know the Indonesian the movie name Jinny or Jinny. It's the same like a, like a, the fairy of the lamp. Okay, the name is a very important because I put na my name J I N N Y. The Indonesian movie, yeah, the spelling exactly same Jinny, the the lamp of the the wizard. So whenever I pray, God really listen to me. Everything pop up in my life. That is the power of the, your name, okay? <laughs> ja, the, 안녕하세요, 여러분. Look like I'm a local, local people here, but I'm Korean. No one believe me. That's why I always have to say, 안녕하세요, 저는 혜진이에요. 한국말, 한국말, can speak Korean. Have to say that, you know. Uh, thank you for the invite us. And I really want to uh, thank God for the, this second, my, second life of my new chapter of my life. I came here as a missionary, Orangasili missionary. So at that time, I was uh, 26 years old only, and I decided to die for Jesus. And I came here as a missionary. And I serve God sincerely as a pastor's wife and take care of four little um, the, the angels at home. So I thought, God, am I doing something wrong? Are you punishing me? Or do I need to do something? Because I say, I want to die for you. That's why you want me to die now. I just ask him to God when I diagnosis as a the, the cancer patient. At that time, the situation was, of course, we are in Miri, but my mom was a stroke in the hospital, and she got a big brain surgery, so she don't have a, the, the independent self-motion. She need to help by the, all the nurses. So time goes by, my face is a, just a, thank God she's still alive. I always just pray that, thank God, thank God, mom is still there. But after I got the cancer, I was so shocked. Is it curse from the, our family members? Something too long in the past life or something? But through the, this season, God let me experience of the miracle every day. I go through the I go through the eight cycle of the chemo. That's why my hair all drop. You think that now, current, when you see me, what do you feel that? Wow, your hairstyle so nice, ah. curly and the, uh, the hairstyle so stylish, right? But my hairstyle come from the otake. <laughs> yeah, and I done my like a 25 section of the radiotherapy and uh, two, too much removed from the, my breast through the surgery. But when I go through the, this surgery, I don't feel very tough. The people already say, oh, if you go through the chemo, you will be very weak. You need to be careful and you, need, you cannot do any the general work, the, the, the works that people uh, uh, generally, generally do. But because God let, allowed me to experience the, His peace the world cannot give and give me a strength every day. I do general exercise. I do my online classes. And this is the leisure that even I wear the week, I complete my all the Korean courses. 
with uh, my student. We do the testimony. We read the one-year Bible reading study. And then the, you see even Malay student, they had a Bible course, the ladies' study. I complete in one year that during the treatment of the cancer. That I want to be a witness of his miracle upon my life. And because I experience of the, my miracle every day, I have a upgrade my faith. That Remember I say my mom is in, on the, in the bed and my prayer was God extension her life. That is the best for me. After cancer treatment, my prayer is no longer the same like that. God, you heal me and let me experience your miracle. You can do the same thing to my mom in Korea. I keep praying for it and I really pray for who got sick or get, have uh, the difficulties or in the depression. I really share the more living testimony than what I have before came here as a missionary. A lot of the believers say, uh, I'm a leader. I know God quite long term. I'm a pastor. I'm a leader of the cell, cell group. So uh, nothing increasing my faith or I'm maximum already can be said like that because it's a, you have a long year to serve God. But God wants you to do something, you in your life. I just tell you the, my story, but it's not just my story, you know. You have uh, your own miracle every day. Do you wish to experience miracle every day? You have to ask to God because Jeremiah 33, chapter 3, what say? Call him. He will reveal the great things to you. But because nowadays we have a very good idol, you know, Google idol. Whatever you need to ask, Immediately search in Google. We no longer ask to God, God, what to do? What is the best way to find the people? But nowadays, we are searching in Google. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I can go like this, this, this. What is your priority in your life? Before cancer, I always pray to God, God, I want to, uh, your will be done in my life. Please let me do what is your will. But after the cancer, my prayer changed to, God, I don't want to do anything. I want to do what you want me to do. Let me meet people that you want me to meet and inspire them or spend time with them. When, I, my, when my prayer changed, it, God opened the door to let me do, upgrade my face plus my position in my career too. Before I came to Malaysia, I was a nurse, okay? Registered nurse. So I work in the hospital, but because that stable life, I just bye-bye because I want to die for Jesus. So when I came here and I work as a missionary, of course, God want me to really depend on Him only. So He provide all the money, the living costs, everything, and provide me every day. So I am no longer concerned about financial issue. Why? Our God is a great banker. He created the money and created everything. So if you ask for husband or wife or children, God is provide. So you just ask to him, then he will provide. So after married, I just no longer doing the mission work. So no support from the variety of friends or things. So what I can do? God let me be a Korean lecturer in university. Story cut because Korean drama always got an episode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Until 16, right? Generally, my story, story cut goes to the episode 14, okay? <laughs> okay, if you want to hear more stories, uh, take down the, all the clock, uh, okay? <laughs> Cannot go back home today, yeah? Uh? 
자, when I married to my husband, I cannot speak English very well. Why? I'm Korean ma. I only speak Korean before. But God bless me to the ministry in uh, Orang Asli, right? So, 사야 볼래 짝가 빠하사 말라요. 사야 볼래 빠함 주가 사야 이니 사야 스카랑 볼래 커뮤니케이션 등한 이더 까왕 까한디 Orang Asli. Yeah. Okay. So when I'm wedding, uh, married my husband, I have a half half conversation, half English, half Bahasa. So whenever we complain to fight each other, we cannot fight because it's so funny. He have to speak in English or Ch Chinese change to the English. I also speak in Korean to change to English. So something need to fight. We look at each other. We laugh. We cannot communicate very well. Bahasa, I don't know the bad word. Bodo is the best insert for me to speak one. I don't know. After three years later, I, my English, the skill improved. But God want me to silent when we argue or conflict. So sometimes, you want to be anger or something, please be silent. And when anger goes down, try to talk to your friends, spouse, and things. Because God wants us to learn about the skill, living skill each other. So God teach me slow learn language. But because of the I learn English well, God and bless me to. Uh, being a Korean lecturer, so I study as uh, starting teaching Korean in university. So that's why I can do the online course during my pandemic season and the chemotherapy. And because I say, God, I want to upgrade my life to influence more people and, of course, save money also because uh, cancer treatment got a lot of money. So I really pray to God, God, what you want me to do? So God give me a strength. So God give me a three new job that one is the university, one is the company teaching, one is the I deal with the Malaysia Korean Education Center, which is the Korean government provide the teacher to the secondary school to teach Korean. So I get got a part-time fees from the Korean government. Okay? So through the, this crisis, God want me to experience of the upgrade my faith, upgrade my career, and upgrade my husband. <laughs> you know why? My husband became an auntie, understand what I'm doing as a wife. Fully, 100% understand. So now we can chit chat like an auntie each other. More friend, we are getting closer and closer. Because he understands how hard folding the boundaries of the six, fam six members of family. And how hard everything is there is uh, difficult, you know. Whenever he comes back from the work, everything is uh, on the spot. The nail clipper or clothes in the, on the same place. It's very hard work, you know. Please, today, go back to your house and say to your mother or wife, Thank you so much to hard works, okay? So, God is great. God is living God. God is wonderful to everyone. I, whenever we are busy church, we are praying for the revival of the church. Do you want your church to revival? Do you expecting your pastor to do more hard work? No, revival comes from you. If you don't pray to God, God, I want to close to you. I want to know you more. If you don't desire to do it, church revival getting come slower. We are leaving this world because we want to save one more for Jesus. Right? Let's do hard work, okay? One more for Jesus. Amen? Thank you, everyone.
I thought she'd just keep her here. And you know, Korean wives send out so much, so many missionaries is they are willing to die for Jesus. So I thought she will give an altar call. How many of you willing to die for Jesus? Please come here. <laughs> we can joke about it, but that ad is the heartbeat of the gospel, right? When we baptize, it was not just a ceremony, you know. When we baptize in the water, we say that we'll be baptized in his death so that we can be resurrected to enjoy the resurrected life that Jesus has given. So just to give you um, a quick summary, uh, this Easter, uh, that was in May, so this was the update. We go through the challenges time, but God was gracious that uh, as per May this year, uh, the doctor had declared her cancer-free. Yeah? So that was one of the breakthroughs. Then the second thing is, you know, uh, when we first came out, I can be very honest because I've been living by faith. So we don't even know financially we have enough to um, just even go through the first treatment or not. You know what? By the end of the whole treatment, the Lord has provided more than enough through insurance claims, through the love gift of each other, that me and my wife even decided we want to live a debt-free life. So we clear out all the housing loan, all the loan, friend, uh, friendly loan that we got from the family that we were walk out of this situation debt-free and cancer-free. Amen? And this is what the Lord has done in our life. And we believe that it's not just like when my wife said, it's not just not us. We serve the same God. We worship the same God. And I hope that you will be encouraged that truly our Redeemer live, that we worship a living God. Amen? Let me read this scripture and then we will end. Uh, maybe we can get the worship team to, to come. Let's pray. I think we'll invite my wife back to pray for you so that we will all be ready to die for Jesus so that the revival will truly come. You know, so that the revival will truly come. Yeah, worship team come uh, as I just read this scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 to 10. But we have this treasure in the jar. Oh, okay. Okay. But we have this treasure in the jar of clay to show that this is all surpassing power. It's from God and not from us. Don't look to man. Man will disappoint you. But look to God. We have hard press on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. I know it has been a tough season probably for everyone. But take courage. The Lord has not left us. The Lord is with us. And because of that, we can hang on to the last lifeline from Him. You know, this morning, communion, communion we take every month. Until so much that sometimes we just even close our eyes, we can do. But when you look at that, that is the covenant. That is our ultimate hope, you know. That is our life, you know. That there is all the faith that we have put into this Christ that who had died on the cross so that we had access to this life that Jesus has given unto us. The death and the resurrection. And last verse 10 here, we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body too. We partake His death, but yet at the same time, the resurrection life of Christ live in us. Amen? I hope you have been encouraged. Sorry for taking longer than that. Because in Kampong, we used to do three hours, four hours service. They say, Pastor, can you preach more? And we can do overnight if you want. Eh? <laughs> Maybe not today. Why don't I just invite you all to stand? Just worship the Lord. Just exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's like I say, it's not our story, but it's the story that the Lord has done in us. And I just want to really pray because this morning I asked the Lord for a word for this congregation. He said, Just tell them I love Him. I said, So cliche. If I just tell you Jesus loves you, but ponder if Jesus is really standing here and say, I love you. Jesus just standing in front of you say nothing he didn't even want to listen to your complaint or your petition he just say I love you 
that give us so much assurance, right? That give us so much confidence. Jesus is tough, is challenging, life is full of uncertainty, but if you love me, you will not let me go. Because perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. I want you to just put your hand on your heart and we are going to pray a very simple prayer I think there's a call to return to the first love return to the basic return to the simplicity no aircon sound is out connection no good doesn't really matter sometimes we have made our Christian faith so complicated so sophisticated we have forgot the basic today I just want you to make a new dedication before the Lord says God I receive your love this morning can you just pray that prayer God I receive the love this morning the love that you have displayed on the cross for me so that I can walk into this new life not only new life but the new found hope in you Lord keep my heart pure keep my heart renewed so that God we will truly see your kingdom come on earth as it's in heaven do a new thing to revive the nation do a new thing to revive our family. Do a new thing to revive your church that you say is supposed to be found blameless and holy so that when you come back, you will welcome us. Father, just thank you for this beautiful present. Take care. Can you come? Take care. I just get my wife to pray for you all. Um, before we pass the back this time to Pastor Elvin and the church. Thank you, Jesus. I can do everything through you who gives me strength. Thank you for this wonderful time that we leading of all your love upon our life. Sometimes we compare many things with people who have more. But I have Jesus. That's enough for everything. Jesus, touch our heart. Renew it. And let us be born again today, right now. God, bring us to let us worship you in the where you plan for our the church events or anything. Let us desire to search you and show our diligence to find you through the, our action and our daily life, Lord. And let us experience your miracle every day. 
individual life, Lord. Not just Jeannie and Hawk's life, the story. It's not just uh, someone's great testimony. It's my testimony because you love me. You love him. You love her. You love individual life, Lord. Thank you for the, this high praise church, Lord. God, use us to bless the Malaysia, bless the world that you love. We are ready for die for you, Lord. It's not just a physically, but ourselves will die today. Only you will be alive our life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing it again. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I live by voice to worship you and all my soul. Rejoice. Time. I love you, Lord. And I love you, Lord. And I live my way to worship you. Rejoice. Let me be a sweet, sweet sound. And let me be a sweet, sweet sound. And in your ear. In your ear. In Christ alone. Find my glory in the power of the cross. In every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope is Christ. In Christ the Lord, in Christ. Lord, I place my trust. I find my glory in the power of the in every victory. Let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone. In every victory, in every victory, let it be said of me. You declare it. My source of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone. 
Father, we stand here in amazement of who you are. You're a God that loves us. You're a God that has never alone left us. And you are beside us. And Father, even today, we recognize your presence in our midst. For your word declares when two or three are gathered in your name, you are here. And we pray, Father, for the tangible presence, the nearness of your presence, O Lord, to be so tangible to many of us here today. That even in our challenges right now, O Lord, and the different, O Lord, needs that we might be going through, that we would know, O Lord, of your saving grace, the nearness of your presence, that, Lord, you are there for us and with us. And if you are with us, who can be against us? So today I pray, Father, O Lord, even as we stand in agreement with your word that has been released, that they let the weak say they are strong. Let the sick say they are healed in your name. Let the poor say they are rich in you. And those who lack find your sufficiency, that you are more than enough. Than what our circumstances might dictate, and what the world might tell us. For your report is good, Father. O Lord, set our minds on you and you alone, that which is pure, lovely, just, holy, praiseworthy, that which is of you, your truth, that brings light and clarity in our circumstances, that pushes away that darkness, that shows us in you, Lord, we have hope in Christ alone. And so this day as we go, we rest in your assurance we are not alone, that you have gone before us, breaking down walls and such situations. You are behind us to uphold us. You are beside us as our shepherd to lead us. Thank you, Lord, that you are our sustainer in all things. You are our strength daily. You are our shield, O Lord, that covers us. You are our shelter in which we can come into. That strong tower that we can rest in, that nothing will shake us. You are that shalom that brings wholeness and completeness in our whole entire being and body, in our home and circumstances. You are indeed our sufficiency. More than enough. And we go in the name of Jesus, trusting that, Lord, the battle belongs to you. The victory is ours. And so go in His anointing. Go in His name. Go in His love. May the nearness of His presence, the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each one of you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us. If you do need